What's up guys, Nate here. And today I am going to be doing an unboxing of the Fun World Ghostface 25th Anniversary Movie Edition Ghostface costume. Now, on top of an unboxing, I am also going to be comparing it to what I have right here, which is an original screen used hero Ghostface costume from Scream 3. Now, I'm going to give you guys a brief history about the use of the Ghostface costume in the films and the, the, the history of it throughout uh, many years with Fun World and how we finally, after 25 years, came to this product right here. Okay guys, so essentially in a nutshell, when Scream was written, the script was obviously called Scary Movie at the time, um, the killer was described in Kevin Williamson's original script as simply wearing a ghost mask. There was no other description of the killer whatsoever, uh, nothing that said what he was wearing, just the killer wearing a ghost mask. So that left a big, uh, gap almost in the for the filmmakers to kind of fill in of okay so the killer's wearing a ghost mask what exactly does that mean what else is the killer wearing obviously you just can't have a guy or a girl running around with just a ghost mask on because if they did that you would be able to tell who the killer was based on the rest of the clothes that they were wearing so they had to come up with something that completely covered the killer's body from head to toe. So there were many designs uh, that were tested and kind of toyed with. Um, I won't get into the history of the mask because that, that would be a whole other video and there's already a ton of videos and information out there. So we'll just talk about the costume today because that's what we're unboxing and reviewing. So basically costume designer Cynthia Bergstrom was tasked with creating this killer. What else are they wearing aside from the mask? Um, Wes Craven, I've had many conversations with Cynthia um, and Wes Craven essentially originally wanted like a ghostly look from head to toe. So naturally he wanted a white costume. He wanted the costume to be white. Um, and there were just a lot of issues with that. Um, on one hand, there, there, there's talks there. You, you, if you read around, talk to several people on the crew, there was always the concern that with a white cloak and a white hood might come across a little KKK ish. They obviously wanted to try to avoid that. Um, but also he wanted like a, uh, almost like a windbreaker type material, like a plastic, like ripstop something that could zip up real quick to cover his body, the killer's body, and he wanted it to be white. Uh, Cynthia Bergstrom basically begged and pleaded with Wes to not have it be white. She said it's gonna be a nightmare. Every little spill that he takes and the elements and you know, white shows everything. White shows everything. So basically what was gonna end up happening was they were gonna have this nightmare of trying to match like dirt and blood and every little speck of everything that you could show up would show up on the costume. So Wes is, Wes finally agreed, no, okay, ditch it, no white, white, white is gone. No white for the ghost face costume. So what Wes ended up deciding to do instead was he agreed to allow a black costume as long as it covered the entire body. But now Wes had a concern and that concern was how well is this going to show up on film? We, we're, we have a lot of night shoots, we have a lot of dark scenes. How well is this costume actually gonna show up on film? So that was the next task that Cynthia Bergstrom was given. So through a chain of events, while they were in Healdsburg, California, doing location scouting, one of the uh, production people on the film, they walked past a uh, fabric store in Healdsburg near the fountain, the infamous fountain scene. And in the window of that fabric store, it said was a 
dress that was made out of this black material that when it caught the light just right, it shimmered, it almost sparkled, it glowed, so to speak. Um, and a light bulb went off and was like, that's that's what we need. That, that right there, that's what the fabric has to be for the ghost face costume. It's perfect, it's dark, but under certain lighting, it shows a little bit more, it's shimmery. It kind of has this like novelty feel to it. After all, it's supposed to be a cheap Halloween costume that anyone can pick up at the five and dime anywhere. So what ended up happening was that was what they decided to make the ghost face costume out of. They bought a bunch of the material, Wes loved it. Cynthia had the costume design, took it. They were handmade by a uh, seamstress in San Francisco and the rest is history. Ghost face icon, horror icon, forever horror icon, forever slasher icon is born. Now, back to the fun world aspect of this. At the time, fun world, the mask that they produced, which was the ghost face mask. This isn't the exact one. This is a later version. This is also a screen used copy. Um, but the mask they produced at the time was part of a line called Fantastic Faces. So all there was was a mask. There was no costume to go with it. So movie comes out, super successful. Now every kid wants to be Ghostface for Halloween. Everyone's like, where can I get that Ghostface costume? We want the mask, we want the costume, we want this. Fun World goes into a tailspin. We gotta do something. So Fun World was unable to get a actual screen used robe to use as a reference. So what were they forced to do? Basically produce a copy based off of what they could see on film in the movie, which was at the time, you know, the VHS, maybe the DVD, but probably not. Um, they were just kind of going by screenshots and stuff that they could see that they could make out. And they kind of came up with like a rough idea of how, you know, the streamers looked and the material and how it was cut, and how it fit, whatever they, obviously with the idea in mind, like, you know, the, the costumes used in the film are handmade. They're hand stitched, they're hand designed, they're hand tailored. Um, these are going to be mass produced. They knew they weren't going to look exactly like what was used in the film, but they tried to do as close as they could. So what ends up happening? Scream 2 comes out. Now you have what's called the Scream Stalker costume, as Fonor went to call it, um, which is the first time that they had produced a costume that was supposed to be what you see in the film packaged with one of these masks. Um, Flash forward, as time goes on, all of this, you know, Scream 2, Scream 3, Scream 4 comes out. Um, Fun World still continues to produce the same costume, the same pattern, the same everything. Um, it, it was basically, you know, the, the arm tassels, the streamers were completely different. Um, the hood was really small and tight. It didn't open up here in the center. Um, the bottom was cut differently. It most importantly, the standout thing was it didn't have that great sparkle that Wes Craven and Cynthia Bergstrom loved for Ghostface, which helped it show up better on camera. Essentially what the screen used robes were made out of, and we're going to check one out. We're also obviously going to do this unboxing, which is the point of this video, but, um, they are made out of what is called American Jersey knit cotton with silver Lurex threads weaved throughout. Now, Lurex is a very expensive material. It's basically a shiny, almost mirrored metallic material. Um, it's often used in dresses, like high-end, we're talking high-end expensive dresses, to give it kind of like a sheen. Um, and when compared to like a cheaper dress that is gonna go for the same effect, they're going to use something like a sequin, um, plastic, you know, kind of cheap sequins. So moving along here, basically, um, that's the material that the costume was made out of. Again, very expensive material. They were also hand tailored, hand stitched, hand put together. 
um, each and every one of them. So they have a lot of hand finished detailing. Um, in essence, very expensive. There's no way that Fun World could mass produce a costume like this, even if they had one in hand. There's no way they can mass produce these to that level of quality that the ones made for the film were. It would just be too expensive. Um, the actual screen used hero costumes used in Scream 1 through 4, we're only talking about 1 through 4. I'm going to talk a little bit about the new one, but I can't get too into that. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, they ranged anywhere from $350 to $750 a piece to make. That is total cost for fabric and for the seamstress to hand uh, tailor all of them. An average of $750 per robe. So again, if you want to know why you never got exactly what was on screen, well, that's why. We finally arrive at 2021. Fun World has finally given fans what they have been asking for since 1996. So basically as it stands right now, these are really hard to get your hands on. A lot of places had them available for pre-order. A lot of fans pre-ordered them. Not a lot of fans have received their pre-orders yet. It's nothing on Fun World's end. It's nothing on the store that you pre-ordered them and uh basically because of covid you know everything is uh kind of backed up everything's delayed and shipments haven't made it over to the u.s yet i mean all this stuff is made overseas um and there's just a lot of delays with stuff so they are very hard to come across right now um i was able to get mine thanks to christy at nightmare toys that is nightmare toys Please go to the website. If you live in Vegas or you're visiting Vegas, please go to the store. It is amazing. It is probably the most amazing. It's like it's like a Toys R Us for us horror fans. It is incredible. Christy is one of the most genuine, kind, amazing women I've ever met. She's incredible. Definitely, definitely buyers from Nightmare Toys. Let's take a look at the packaging here. So here we have... It says Ghostface with the classic logo costume. It literally advertises metallic fabric. And then it has a picture of Ghostface and he appears to be holding what looks like a prototype of the Fun World buck knife replica that I showed you in another one of my videos. And then down here on the packaging, it says it contains a hooded robe, gloves, and a mask. comes in your standard costume packaging. Now, let's get this out of the package, take a look at it. Give you my first impressions. Okay, so first we have the mask here. Let's see if it, it, it is sealed. So I'm curious if it smells like vanilla or not. Definitely smells like vanilla. Wow, that is that is awesome. Okay, and here's the gloves, and very cool. The gloves are also that sparkle material. I mean, just I'm just gonna put a glove on real quick because I want to get an idea for. Okay, so the material is really comfortable. Actually, it's really soft um, on the inside. It is double layered. It appears. At least it feels like it is. Maybe it's not. Um, yes. Okay. So I think one side of it has two layers. The other side doesn't. But, uh, and I have fairly big hands. I mean, the gloves fit really well. They're roomy. They're not tight. They're tighter than a hero costume, but we'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, you can see the sparkle effect there. Very cool. Um, let's check out the mask. Ah, I can't believe they went back to that vanilla smell. It's fucking amazing. So this is Easter Unlimited stamp. 
see that right there. And it does unfortunately have kind of like the bib thing going here, which a lot of the ones that come with the costumes do. So basically you don't get a full hood here. You just get the little bib and that's what keeps like your neck from showing. But apparently they're not worried about anything else because you have your hood, but still doesn't really work out too well. Like for a Halloween mask anyways, I'm just gonna kind of show you what it looks like without a hood and stuff. I mean, it's a good mask. It's a nice mask. It's bringing back memories. I can smell the vanilla. This is so, thank you so much Fun World for, for adding the vanilla scent back. This is incredible. Um, the eye mesh is actually really dark. I know I have these gloves on, but you can barely, I mean, you can see my fingers through it, but it's darker, it appears to be darker than most of the more recent Fun World masks. Um, they went back to that latex instead of that shiny vinyl. Um, I mean, the paint job's kind of eh. Um, mine's got a little bit of a flaw there. You can see right there, the paint is uneven. Um, but that can probably be fixed. Um, I suspect a lot of people are going to reshroud these. They will probably get their own hood. Maybe they'll buy like a, I, I foresee a lot of people buying like a, one of the ultra white masks from Walmart and taking that shroud off and attaching it to this to make it, you know, customize it, make it look a little bit better. But in general, the mask is great. The mask looks great. It smells great. Now let's take a look at the costume itself. Let's go ahead and pull this out of here. I really hope I can find another one of these because I really want one that's not gonna open. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna unfold it here. Just kind of comes folded. Oh, that's interesting. So they had to have a piece of cardboard in there to keep it like folded nice. So they folded them around the cardboard. Now, you're probably, what's so interesting? It's a piece of cardboard. Yeah, it's not just a piece of cardboard. It's just a reused uh, card stock for our, their zombie costume. <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny, that's interesting. Hey, you know what? Thank you Fun World for not being wasteful. This is, this is awesome. Like, apparently you didn't need these, so most companies would just throw them out and then reproduce a blank cardboard thing to fold around this. No, you guys are A plus for uh, not wasting anything. So here is the costume here. Um, very light, very, very, very light. Uh, let's take a look. The fabric's the same as those gloves. Very shiny, very sparkly. Uh, the hood, the hood's actually pretty big. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Um, it's got a very thin foam material in here, like almost like non-existent. It's, I can't, I can't explain how thin it is. It's, it's that thin. It's so thin. I can't even tell you how thin it is. Um, let's see, get my bearings here. This costume is kind of. Okay, so let's take a look at the arms. All right, so we do have the opening where your hands come through. It does have elastic. So it kind of goes tight around your hands, which is good. And then let's take a look at the streamers. Let's see if I can see, yeah, there we go. So the streamers, very similar. They are cut the way the Scream 2, Scream 3, and Scream 4 robes were cut. Um, but they're pretty darn accurate. Let's look at the bottom of the costume. So the bottom is cut into triangles, which is actually more accurate to the way the Scream 1 robes were cut at the bottom. Scream 2 was kind of like cut into rectangles and Scream 3 was kind of cut into squares. Same with Scream 4. Um, so it's almost like a hybrid Scream 1 slash Scream 2. 
robe, string three. Um, also of note, let me make sure I'm not wrong here. Okay, there's the front of the costume. Okay, so yes. So it is essentially a pullover. There is a little bit of Velcro here and I will show you that, but it is essentially a pullover robe, which also the only film to use the pullover robes was Scream 1. After that, they all had a split down the middle, either halfway or all the way to the bottom. That was either Velcro or in some cases, metal snap buttons. Um, Scream 1 was the only film to use like a pullover. So this is a pullover robe. Now, like I said, there is Velcro here, but it's simply just to make it a little bit easier to slide on. It literally is what attaches right here on the neck. Um, yeah, it's a light costume. Um, very screen accurate compared to what Fun World has produced in the past. Let's look at the screen used robe. So the screen used robe is noticeably heavier. It's very heavy. It's a lot thicker. It's still very thin. You can see through it, but it's still very thin. Um, the hood on a hero screen used robe is very, has a very thick, stiff foam inside, which helps it keep its shape. It also has a strip of Velcro on the underside because the screen used masks had Velcro stitched, modified, stitched to the top of the, the hood so that they could attach when the actor was wearing it and they were running, they didn't have to worry about the hood falling off. Um, this particular robe is Roman's robe and it is actually equipped with the metal snap buttons. They go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, other interesting note, the hero costumes have the gloves attached. They are sewn into the wrists. They are permanently on there. There is a little arm slit or a little slit in the wrist so that the stuntman could slide his hands out and have free hands in between takes. But the gloves are attached to the costume. They're sewn in, as you can see, they're a lot bigger, baggier. Um, so there is a hero glove, again, attached to the costume. I think another reason they attached it to the costume was because the whole concept was like, person was supposed to be able to easily slip in and out of it to avoid detection, throw people off. Now, here is the screen used hero arm tassels. You see how big they are, how long they are. This one's like draping over. They're huge. And here is the Fun World arm tassels. As you can see, they're almost like, so the screen used ones, it's like they get longer as they get close to the armpit. It's like short, longer, longest. These are almost the same size, all three of them. And they're very small when compared. Um, it's really hard to try to do this, just so you guys know. Um, I'm also trying to be very gentle with this, the screen used one. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see the difference in size. I mean, Fun World, Hero. Fun World, Hero. Similar cut, but completely different, if that makes sense. Here is a comparison. There is the screen used hero robe. This is the glove. As I said, it's attached. Trademark a ghost face. Here's the fun world glove. Now again, it's very stretchy material, whereas this is not stretchy at all. I do want to emphasize that the hero robes, the material is, you cannot stretch it. It, it doesn't give really at all. So this is, Although it looks significantly smaller, because it is, the Fun World glove um, is very stretchy. I, I'd be willing to bet that it would fit on anybody's hand nicely. All right, guys, now I want to talk about the fabric differences. And this is going to be the most tricky thing to see, because one of the things with the ghost face, the fabric, that Lurex, that great Lurex material, feels so good. It's soft, makes it so expensive. Um it does amazing things 
under different lighting conditions and under different um, angles. And uh, that's a part of the reason why the material is so sought after and expensive, especially in use with dresses and other things. Um, so Lurex is literally a silver metallic fabric. The American Jersey knit, very similar feeling to gauze. Little bit rough, but not, not too rough. It's very soft, but rough. Kind of like gauze. And it has those great Lurex fabric weaved in. And again, it's very hard to capture the right look. Um, I've had people tell me with like a screen use costume, they're like, oh, I see video or pictures of one and it looks too sparkly or it doesn't look sparkly enough. It literally does so many different things under different lighting conditions that it's so hard to photograph in a way to make it look like it does in the movies. The ghost face 25th anniversary costume from Fun World. Let me get a let me get a piece of the fabric here in my hand so we can we can look at it. Okay. So as you'll notice, it is noticeably sparklier, has a lot more of a shimmer to it. Feeling-wise, it's a lot thinner and also a lot rougher. It feels very rough to the touch. Um, and it's very hard to show on camera comparing it to the hero robe. But you can tell in hand that the hero robe, these fa these fibers, the Lurex is actually silver reflective material. Whereas this appears to be, and again, it's so hard to capture on film. So hard to capture. The Fun World robes appear to have simply a, a shiny reflective black plastic, almost like a sequin type material embedded in the regular fabric that causes it to sparkle and shimmer in the light. I'm just saying what it appears to me when comparing the two. I can't swear by that, that that's what this is made of, but it is, it's thinner, it's rougher, and it has a sequin feel to it. Um, and it does appear to be black, shiny plastic that just gets that effect when the light hits it. All right, guys, so here's a comparison of the hoods. Here is the hero robe, as you can see. Nice, firm, thick uh, foam insert there to keep it stiff and steady. And then here is the Fun World one. Very flimsy, thin, almost non-existent foam. Um, it's hard for it to keep its shape laying down anyways. Whereas this one, you can just, you can hear it. I mean, it's solid. And this is just flimsy. Um, the hero robes have drawstrings to loosen or tighten the hood. This one does not have that.
All right, guys, so that about does it for the video. I didn't go into, like, super in-depth details about the entire history of the costumes that Fun World made, the masks, um, things like that, because our friend Douglas over at Drown Boy Productions, um, he is going to be doing a video soon of a comparison himself to his own screen used robe from uh screen two and i just wanted to give douglas a chance to have like a lot more to talk about as far as the nitty-gritty details of the fun world costumes and the masks and you know what how they used to look and how they look now um a couple final thoughts on the video um I want to be clear, I'm still not 100% sure if there are in fact metallic threads, fabric, weaved into the Fun World costume. Um, as I said, when comparing it to a hero costume that I know has metallic, very specifically silver metallic Lurex threads in it, um, when comparing it to that, it doesn't appear... To be a metallic material it appears to be a very shiny reflective black plastic material kind of similar to black sequin um, that when it catches any little bit of light it, it gives off a, a shine um, a sparkle effect so uh, yeah I, that's what it appears to me but I don't I don't know for sure how the fun world costumes are made what materials they're used it does in fact say on the package that the materials it says 50 percent metallic thread so who knows the only issue that i really ran into with the fun world costume is the lack of the drawstring to tighten this area here use velcro instead and it's this little tiny square of Velcro on the top here and here. And the issue we kept running into while filming the video was the one side of the Velcro really likes to curl over and get stuck to the costume itself. And it's really hard to get it off of that costume. Like really hard. Almost felt like it was going to rip the costume material. Um, you can see in this photo that uh, w what I mean, and you can also see the almost damage that it does when it does that because you have to separate it. And no matter how, how careful you are in separating the Velcro from the costume itself, it just kind of slowly rips the, the, the threads and the fibers out and kind of softens that area that it was stuck to. So that's the only issue that I really had as far as design goes with the Fun World costume. However, I did speak to Frank McGovern at Fun World briefly, who kind of just gave me a little bit of a, like, little bit of information on some of the design changes. So as I suspected, most of the design changes on this costume were mandatory due to, um consumer safety laws regarding Halloween costumes. Um, that's kind of always been a big thing with uh, the ghost face, even the mask. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, why isn't the eye mesh as dark as it is in the movie? Well, that's because there's literal laws that these companies like Fun World have to follow in order for their products to be safety approved, to, allow, to be allowed to be sold. Um, so the eye mesh can't be that dark as it is in the movie. It has, you have to be able to see out of it relatively well. The drawstring closure system had to go because of the safety thing. Had to be changed to Velcro. So there's really no way around that. The tassels on the arm. The reason that they are significantly shorter than the ones on the hero robe is, again, because of those safety concerns. They didn't want them being like a tripping hazard. Um, so that, that all had to be shortened. Um, so a lot of the design changes are mandatory due to the nature of what this costume is. That it is, at the end of the day, a Halloween costume. Um, and it has to follow the same safety regulations that all these types of products do. So um, no, no fault on Fun World's in there. Um, 
if they could have done the drawstrings and the longer tassels, they absolutely would have. Um, so yeah, great, amazing costume. Even the hood with it being kind of, you know, flimsy, um, and the, the, the foam being so thin, it's still, the hood looks great. It, it feels great worn. Um, you could easily modify it yourself as well to put a little bit of Velcro underneath there and then maybe put a little bit of Velcro on a mask you're going to wear to kind of keep it on. Because of how light the foam they they use is versus the hero costume, it does tend to slide back fairly easily or slide forward. Um, so slight modification, you could easily fix that. And maybe that's something fun where we'll do in the future. Maybe they'll add some Velcro underneath that hood. I just wish that the deluxe movie edition costume that we're paying $49.99 for I wish it came with a full hooded mask now when I say full hooded I don't mean the big like 25th anniversary deluxe mask that has like the dwarf style hood on it I mean like the classic like this this is the type of mask that should have came with that costume the classic with the classic hood there should have been a little bit of Velcro right here and a little bit of Velcro inside that hood. Um, that would have made it A+, 100% A+, um, for me. Um, because it doesn't come with that, I'm still going to give it an A. Honestly, it's a great, great, great item. Um, kudos to everybody at Fun World, to Frank McGovern, to uh, RJ Torbert, um, Thank you for giving fans what they've been wanting for 25 years. Um, but like I said, in the future, if there's any changes, I would love to see them include a mask like this in with it. Um, and that's why I did in the worn shots. I could have shown what the costume looked like with a while wearing a mask like this. But I chose not to because I wanted to be fair and actually review the costume itself as it comes, as is. I wanted to do it completely as is. So that's why I wore just the the uh, bib mask as they're, they've become to be known. Total A overall for the 25th anniversary movie edition Ghostface costume from Fun World. Again, it retails for $49.99. I believe the child version retails for $24.99, maybe $29.99. I might have that wrong. Uh, that's about it. Oh, one more thing. I did want to mention, um, I know people are going to ask about Scream 5, Scream 2022, the costumes in that. And so, um, as we know, the costumes in Scream 2022, the gloves are not attached. So I did originally suspect that the reason the gloves weren't attached is because Fun World had likely designed this costume more off of what we are going to see in the new Scream. However, after talking to Frank and learning that the gloves were, it was kind of, there were all these safety things that they had to, to you know, follow. Um, I, I don't believe that's the case. I think it was just another thing. It was like, you know what, better safe than sorry detachable gloves that way they can easily come off without having to take the costume off um and as far as the costume the fun world costume like the far, as far as it being a pullover as opposed to having like the opening no issues whatsoever getting it on and off i was able to get it on and off like super easily but yeah the scream 2022 costume um i do think that this is going to be similar to it but i do not believe that it was designed directly off of that um I do have fabric that is the hero fabric used in the new Scream. Um, I'm unable to show it at this time. Um, so I'm not able to show you a comparison of the fabrics. But when I'm able to, I will absolutely do so. I don't know if I'll do another video just to kind of show it. But I have some other Scream 2022 stuff that I'm going to do a video on eventually when I'm allowed. And um, maybe I'll include it then. Um, so yeah, that's all for now guys. Like I said, definitely pick up this costume. Um, you'd be stupid not to. We've wanted it for 25 years. We finally have it. Go out and buy one, buy multiple, show them now that they finally given us what we wanted, show them that, you know, 
they did the right choice. So though they the, maybe maybe if we can you know show them by buying them, um, we can continue to get these things that we've been requesting for all these years. So a for me, fun world, um, scream fans everywhere, Ghostface fans absolutely pick this up. Don't even question it. Go out and buy one. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe.